Insulin, one of the 77 hormones in our body. Our hormones are extremely important. They need to be in balance. Oftentimes, when one hormone is out of balance, it affects the other hormone. And when you get another hormone out of balance, it affects another hormone and multiple hormones. And this affects the way we feel and it affects our overall health because our body needs to function with balanced hormones. I'm John Laspina. I'm the carnivore teacher. And today we're going to talk about the hormone insulin. Insulin does not just take care of the sugar in our body. Insulin is a hormone that does a lot of other regulatory things. But the main one, the one that we tend to focus on, is insulin is the key that opens up the door to let the glucose into the cell. That's true. Now, when insulin is present, fat storage occurs. Fat is being stored for energy, for later use. Every time we eat protein and carbohydrates, we, our pancreas, secretes the hormone insulin because the insulin gets the energy into the cell to initiate ATP, which is energy. And unfortunately, if your insulin is not working at all, like a type 1 diabetic, that person's going to starve to death. doesn't matter how much food they eat. There's no insulin. There's no key. The, cell, the cells don't open up. There's no energy. They will start to lose weight and lose weight and lose weight. And eventually, type 1 diabetics before the age of exogenous insulin died. They did not live very long. And then they came up with a therapeutic way for type 1 diabetics to live longer. And that was, guess what? Extremely low to no carbohydrates. They would eat protein and fat only, and they, wouldn't, they could live a little bit longer. But you still need that hormone, insulin, to open up the cells. That's the main job. It's one of the main jobs that insulin does. The opposite of insulin is glucagon. Now, the pancreas also secretes glucagon, and glucagon kind of works in reverse. When insulin is low, glucagon is high. When glucagon is low, insulin is high. And there's an example of if one is out of whack, the other one, when one goes one way, one goes the other way. It's like a seesaw. And there are so many hormones in our body. Men have testosterone and a little bit of estrogen. Women have a lot of estrogen and a little bit of testosterone, and they have progesterone. We have from the hypothalamus, we have hormones that come out of there. From our pituitary gland, we have hormones that come out of there. From so many parts of our body and organs, there are all these different hormones that are so important that we keep in balance and check. When we are eating an enormous amount of carbohydrates and sugar, we are secreting so much insulin to shove that glucose into those cells until those cells can't take anymore. Then the sugar goes back to the liver and it tries to store the rest in our organs. So we get fatty organs like a fatty liver and a fatty pancreas. And then it spills over into this kind of fat and this kind of fat and fat, fatty, everything gets, it has, it spills over. And that's how we become obesogenic is through enormous amounts of sugar. And a type two diabetic is when the cell doesn't answer the door that much anymore. All this insulin is trying to get that sugar and in the cell is just tired, tired of letting in all that extra sugar that you're giving it by eating all those sugary foods and carbohydrate laced foods. So it becomes insulin resistant. Your pancreas is actually pumping out more insulin than the average person if you're a type two diabetic but your cells are insulin resistant. All that insulin, hyperinsulinemia, is floating around the blood. High sugar is floating around the blood. This is terrible, terrible for all of our hormones. So it's so important to secrete just the amount of insulin to let the protein and the sugar into the cell if you're eating any glucose or the glucose that your liver's making, just the amount of insulin to let it in, and that's it. And then your body uses that for energy and then your insulin drops and you're not in fat storage mode all the time. And another thing to also consider is don't constantly eat 
People who snack, they have breakfast, they have two snacks, they have lunch, they have three snacks, they have dinner, they snack all night long before they go to bed. You're never allowing your body to rest. You're constantly pushing out all this insulin. Your cells are constantly trying to take it all up. Snacks are usually carbohydrates, sugars, and seed oils. I don't really think there's that much protein. And it's just a toxic state for the body. And the body responds by storing the fat and we get obese. And with lots of obese cells, fat cells, cells that swell up, you have these chemicals, cytokines that get released from the fat cells that are extremely inflammatory and are bad for the body. And you're in this toxic state. The solution is so simple, lower carbohydrates and sugars. Just lower it down to 20 total grams a day or down to zero if you want to go carnivore. That's what I did. And my body's not in this toxic state or this constant battle. I eat my food. It's protein and fat and almost no carbs. I get a little bit of insulin released for the protein, just enough to get the protein into my muscles and my cells. And the fat gets you know, taken care of by the bile and absorbed for energy and for nutrition. And that's it. No more insulin until the next meal, which is one more in the day. One meal in the afternoon around 11 and one meal at six o'clock at night. That's how I do it. Some people do OMAD. They do one meal a day with no snacking. Therefore, your pancreas isn't shooting out insulin all day long. Just one time. For me, my pancreas is giving me insulin two times and it's a small amount of insulin. And I know mine is small because my blood labs show through my fasting insulin that I have a very healthy insulin level. It's very, very low. It's not constantly or chronically high. So ladies and gentlemen, consider your pancreas. Consider your macronutrients and not consuming chronic excessive carbohydrates and sugar over a long period of time. Keep it as low as possible. And then all of your other hormones that need to function will function in a balanced manner because the pancreatic hormone, insulin, and glucagon, they're functioning properly because you're not overloading it with sugar and carbs or multiple meals. I hope you learned something today. I hope it didn't confuse you. When I learn these things, I get aha moments. I get excited and I want to share them. And that's why I make these videos to pass it on to you. I check it out. I make sure that I have my facts right. And I do. Have a good day, everybody.